Good morning, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. My name is Camille Fournier. As you said, I'm the CTO at Rent the Runway. And I'm here to talk about data and product and tech. Oh, my. So before I begin, I wanted to quickly introduce Rent the Runway, because many of you probably are not familiar with us. We are a startup in the United States. And we provide designer dress and accessory rentals. So what does that mean? You go on our site. You find a dress you love. You pick a date. We will ship that dress to you on that date. You wear it, look beautiful, take a bunch of pictures, and ship it back to us. Very simple. We are a very data-driven business. We have always been data-driven from the get-go. We use data in pretty much everything we do. We use data when we plan our inventory buying. So figuring out what dresses to buy, not only based on fashion and what we think our customers are going to like, but also based on durability, right? We're a rental service, so we need to know what types of fabrics are going to hold up to being worn many times, being cleaned many times. We use data to power pricing on our site, so we don't just say, oh, well, the retail price is X, so our rental price is Y. We actually have a full demand forecasting model that we use to help us price our inventory. And of course, we use data for all of the product features of our website. So for example, this is a feature that launched a couple of years ago. It's called Our Runway. We are one of the only places where you are able to look at real pictures of real women in designer fashion to actually purchase, or in this case, rent. Uh, this was a product that was a great collaboration of product, tech, and, and analytics, or data, um, that we thought was a very interesting opportunity for us because we have so many customers experiencing every single item of clothing, because again, we are a rental company. We actually thought, hey, you know what? We can let you shop by looking at these real pictures. Um, not only that, but we actually let you look at these pictures and filter and sort them based on women whose body types are similar to yours, because women, when they write reviews, are very willing to share with us and share with others their body type in order to help other people rent better. Rent the Runway has a somewhat unique model for doing uh, product development. So I am the CTO. I am the head of technology. I manage all product development and technology operations, product developers. My peer, Sarah, is the head of product. She manages all product management and UI UX design. And finally, our peer, VJ, is the chief analytics officer. Now, he manages business insights and business analysis, but he also manages data engineering and data science. And so this is a somewhat different structure than many organizations where all of these functions might report into the CTO, for example. And it's an interesting structure for me because in my past, I actually worked in data engineering. So now I work as a peer to data engineering, whereas before I used to work really in data engineering. And our teams have to work very closely together. So I get to observe what makes data teams work well with product engineering and product management. And one thing that I've heard a lot is that you know, there's a struggle that data feels sometimes to be heard. Right? It's hard to be heard. And frankly, organizations struggle to hear data. I mean, uh, one of the earlier speakers was mentioning, like, we want 48-hour turnaround times on reports. Right? We want to know stuff immediately, and we often struggle to get that information in a timely fashion. So if you believe that data is for everyone, if you want everyone in your organization to be hearing you, to be listening to what you have to say, how can you do that? How can you speak so that they'll be able to hear you? So when I was preparing this talk, it was Halloween in the United States. And I was thinking of what a good metaphor might be. And I thought of a very popular Halloween group costume in the United States, which is three characters from The Wizard of Oz, the Scarecrow, the Lion, the Tin Man. Now, if you think of these three characters, you think of sort of three, three strengths, right? Courage, brains, heart. And each of these characters has two of those strengths and believes that they lack in the third. So let's start with you, my data cowardly lions. You guys have gigantic brains, right? Data folks have gigantic brains. You have to know the math or the statistics. You have to know the tech to be able to do the job at all. And at your best, you have a huge sense of heart. You have a huge sense of what is important to the business and the customer. Our chief analytics officer likes to say that the best people in data are thinking about the product in the shower. They're thinking about the product all the time. But the thing that frustrates those of us outside of data teams when interacting with you is that lack of courage, that lack of willingness to make any conclusions until you have all of the data 
lined up, right? Until you have that very, very high confidence bar. That can be sort of frustrating to those of us, for example, in tech. We're a little bit like the Tin Man, right? We have the brains, we know how to write the code. We have lots of courage. The best product engineers want to ship code. They want to ship code the second that it's done, maybe even occasionally before it's really done, right? We want to ship code. What we lack due to time or whatever is that sense of what's really important to the customer, to the user, right? We're focused on writing the right code. Now, it's not to say that all technologists are not good at product, but you know, we're really focused on writing the best code. Fortunately, we have our product managers uh, who have that huge heart, that huge sense of what is important to the customer, what is important to the user. That is what a great product manager is thinking about all the time. Great product managers are also very bold. They have a lot of courage. They also want to ship product a lot, right? They want to learn as quickly as possible. Fortunately for all of us, they don't tend to have the deep, deep, deep domain expertise to actually write the code themselves or do the deep analysis. Otherwise, they'd be crazy overlords and we would all be out of jobs. So these three themes, themes together can create amazing harmony and creativity. But it is easy for the bold voices coming out of product and tech to sometimes overwhelm the voices coming out of data. So how do you make yourself heard? Well, a soprano can't sing bass. You have to work with what you've got. And that means you have to play to your strengths and use those strengths to overcome that, those other voices from product and tech. So let's start with your strengths. What's your first strength? It's heart, OK? The sense of the customer and the business, the sense of what is important to be thinking about. Uh, if you're familiar with the story of the Cowardly Lion, you might remember that he gains his courage by fighting the Wicked Witch of the West on behalf of Dorothy, right? So fighting for someone else is a big part of having that heart strength. It is very easy for data scientists to become cynical, for data folks to become cynical, right? To know the price of everything and the value of nothing, and you do not want to do this. It's fine to be skeptical, but you do not want to be cynical. It's also, of course, very easy to be drowning in that sea of big data. And if you don't have an opinion, if you don't have a point of view, you're just going to go hither and yon. You're going to look at this point. You're going to look at that point. Or probably what will really happen is your product managers are going to tell you, hey, give me a report on this. Give me a report on that. Tell me, tell me information about this. Write this algorithm. Right? That's no good. You do not want to be in that situation. Instead, what you have to do is you have to focus. Because when you focus, when you think about what's important, when you use that sense of knowledge of what is important to the customer and the business, you will know how to focus and you will know when to stop. And knowing when to stop that analysis is really important. So one example of this from Rent the Runway was our Women Like Me product, that our runway product that I described earlier. Women Like Me has an interesting aspect, right? So we have four vectors that you can use, four vectors of data about every woman, right? We have her size, age, height, and bust. And even with only four vectors, that's over 100,000 possible combinations. Now, as a, you can probably imagine, that's not a very useful set of precision, right? It's a lot of data. It's large to store. It's not very quick to compute, right? And frankly, I don't want to match with only maybe one other person. I want a whole range of people that are similar enough but not exact to me, right? So how do we focus this? How do we take these 100,000 combinations and turn them into something that's actually useful for our customer? Again, what is important to the customer? All I care about is are we approximately the same height, give or take an inch or two? Do we have approximately the same bus size? Are we approximately the same age? So we simplify. We create buckets per characteristic, height, bust, and age, demographic group. And the only one we don't create buckets for is actually dress size, right? Dress size is actually pretty important. The result of this is that you have 864 vectors that accurately capture the range of women on our site. So not 100,000, but 864. And we can actually create sane orderings and groupings of these. And I think you can see, here's an example. Uh, one side of this is tall, skinny teenagers, and the other side of this is women like me. And I think you can see it's uh, pretty good, right? It, you, know, you definitely see differences, useful differences, useful groupings. So what's your other strength? The other strength is your gigantic pulsing brain, right? What do we want out of those brains, OK? Well, the biggest thing we want is for you to help us reduce the organizational cognitive inertia 
that we face. It's very easy for organizations to get stuck in their ways to say, this worked last year, it's gonna work this year, it's gonna work next year. We need you to help us test our assumptions, and that means that you need to be testing your own assumptions. In particular, we need you to be very attuned to new information to help us understand what is changing. So you've probably all been in the situation where product engineering made some changes and they broke your ETLs and it was really annoying and you had to go back and fix it, okay? Maybe the problem here is that you're not invested enough in what engineering is doing because when you're invested in what products are being built, first of all, your stuff's less likely to break, but also you will actually be able to identify new data, new changes in behavior or new directions that we're thinking about setting on a product sense. Uh, so the other thing you can do when you are really invested in understanding what's changing and working closely with your engineering teams is that you can help us do better iterative testing. Help us really learn very quickly by building up smaller experiments rather than throwing gigantic things out. The other major aspect of Brain that we look for you guys to help us with is retrospective review. So data cannot predict the future always, possibly ever. Data can explain the past, and that's really, really important, right? We need data to tell us why things we've tried to do actually worked. So one example from Rent the Runway is that earlier this year, we did an experiment. We lowered the prices on some things on our site to see if demand would increase, and guess what? Hooray, it increased, awesome. All right, now, we could have said, after doing that, Lower prices equals higher demand. We're gonna lower prices across the board and just you know, have smaller margins and just try to get lots and lots and lots and lots more demand to make up for it. That is certainly one option, but instead what we have done is we've actually begun an exercise of experimentation to really understand what drives price sensitivity, what drives demand on our site. Understand what characteristics of dresses drive demand, right? Is it that gowns are more sensitive to demand than cocktail dresses like the one that I'm wearing here, right? Or vice versa, are different weekends more sensitive to demand? We built an entire demand forecasting model that we can actually run to understand what we believe the demand will be for a particular dress on a particular weekend. And in fact, you can see from this example, this dress actually has a range of prices because the 70 to $85 range depends on the weekend that you're renting for. It depends on the demand of the weekend that you're renting for. So to sum this up, you have to use the skills that you have. You have to use your strengths to cross that chasm of courage between yourself and product and tech. Use your sense of heart to have a point of view, to have an opinion, to share that opinion, to understand what's really important to the user and the business. Use your gigantic pulsing brains to help give us all a sense of perspective of what's working, what isn't working, why it worked, what's changing about the business. Coco Chanel, a very famous fashion person, said that the most courageous act is still to think for yourself aloud. So please, think for yourselves aloud, share your ideas and opinions with us, and help us create products that are beautiful and functional, but most importantly of all, products that are smart. Thank you very much.